glorify and magnify and exalt your incredible, phenomenal, mind-blowing name. Father, we get together where we share breath. We're in your midst, in your presence, where as a company of people, we ascend into the heavens, Father. We, we ascend, we shift from dimension to dimension, Father. We go from the kingdom of heaven, from the kingdom of earth into the kingdom of heaven. We get to see you, touch you, walk with you, Father, as spirit beings. We engage with you at, level, at levels that we never thought possible. As spirit beings, we get to understand who we are in you and who you are in us at a dimensional understanding that we never thought we could have. Lord, you have become so real that there's no doubt. But we are growing in the understanding of what we can do. We're growing in the understanding of who we are. We're growing in the understanding of what it means to walk in your ways. What it means to stand in your courts. What it means to, to judge with you. What it means to govern with you. What it means to come out of your four faces. What it means to engage with the seven spirits and to walk with them as they educate us. What it means to, to engage with the angelic canopies. Father, we get to understand and engage with with dimension within your realm, Father, where you live and move, Father, where we get to live and move and have our being in you. We get to understand a, a level of intimacy, a, a, level, a level of friendship, a level of family with you and what's out there for us that we have never thought possible. Father, we thought we had to die to experience this. And now, as the Ecclesia, we get to experience the fullness of this incredible journey with you right now. Matter of fact, everything is right now. And Father, I ask that you will begin to ignite inside of us a level of faith that is needed to go beyond what we can perceive or receive. Let's go to a level in our faith where we can step beyond the veil and understand and receive and walk in everything we see. Where everything you're unveiled to us, everything that you show us, all the mysteries, all the secrets that's opened up to us, we get to believe, receive and walk in its fullness. Lord, tonight as we just go on this journey, this journey, Father, that you want us to understand, this place in our, in our walk, to go in, Father, not just to go in, but to understand, to receive, to perceive, to walk in the fullness of the revelation of what's out there for us. Father, we love you, we praise you, Father, we thank you that the enemy is defeated. We thank you, Father, that he has been destroyed and his works are no longer against us. As a matter of fact, he has no power against us because we've raised up as sons coming through our, four, our Father's four faces into creation. Where we take authority and we stand and we bring the light of the world into place. Where we stand and we ignite as suns of flames, Father, full of the burning presence of Yahweh. As you are a consuming fire, so are we. Let's begin to understand the power that we walk in as sons, Father and daughters. Let's begin to understand the glory that comes with a son that believes. Father, we love you. We praise you. We glorify and magnify and exalt you, my King. You are majestic. You are incredible, Father. Thank you, Yahweh. Amen. Okay. Whew. You guys are well? What I want to try and do tonight is, uh, you know, we, we've gone through a lot of these things that I've been teaching lately already. But I have felt, like I said, I have felt that we should maybe just go back a little bit what I want to do tonight is I want to remind you that uh, Yahweh says a couple of things. And you know, one of the things he says is that he says, And the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts. Now just quickly remind yourself, the Lord of hosts is the, 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 the captain of the army. Right? He is the captain of the army. Now have that in mind. If you will walk in my ways and if you will perform my services, then you will also govern my house and also have charge of my courts. Now let's just stop there for a second. I have, I have spoken about this before. And his desire for us is to understand that the capacity he wants to give to us is more than what we have right now. That which he wants us to handle and want, to be, want us to be in charge of is more than what we have right now. It's almost like he's saying, I desire my people to see the light and the fullness of what the light brings. You know, if we know who we are and we know what he wants, to walk, wants us to walk in, then there's so much more coming to us. There's so much more of a responsibility that he wants us to have. And I will grant you free access among these who are standing here. This is Zechariah 3, verse 6 and 7. Now, at this point, um, he is in the heavenly realms. We have to understand this, right? So if, if someone in the Bible can enter into another realm, another dimension, uh, then we need to understand that we can too. Now, I look at Enoch. I look at 
um, Moses, I look at Elijah, Elisha, I look at David, I look at these men of God, even Paul and the apostles that had incredible experiences. We are at a place with Yahweh where we don't need an experience. We have a dimensional realm that has opened up to us. And like Enoch, we can go in at any given time. When I say like Enoch, he's taken a journey with Yahweh that has taken him in physically into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I don't know if it just happened immediately because there's so little detail about him and his life. But what we do know is that it's something that he's probably gone on a journey with. It started off with a relationship. It got deeper and deeper and deeper because he spent more time with Yahweh. And this is what Yahweh is saying tonight. Let's get into a place, into a, 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 a habit of spending time with him. You know, for a very long time, I've gone through a tough time. I've struggled with some things in my life. And I, was just, I, I wasn't in the mood to do the things that I used to do in the manner that I do it. You know, I was going through a healing. And I feel that over the last six months, I received an excessive amount of healing from Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And uh, the amount of time that I've been spending with Him over the last couple of weeks has shifted me to an intimate level with Him that I need to share with you guys. I need you to understand how desperately He longs for a people that can spend much time with Him. And I say this because there's so much we need to learn. There's so much that he wants to pour into us. So at this point, Joshua is in heavenly realms, not on the earth. Um, and the others standing there are heavenly beings. This is where Yahweh uh, promises Joshua that, he, uh, Joshua that he can have free access. But there are conditions. Since Yahweh does not show favoritism. It's like he wants us to understand something. It's not, although it's for everybody, everybody is not entering into the heavens. Right. You know, I mean, everybody believes certain things and everybody has a system in which they operate. But we have to remind ourselves is we believe that Yahweh is an ever increasing God, which means we can never know all of him at one time. He's always revealing more to us consistently, continuously. He's opening more to us as we desire to walk with him, as we open ourselves up to him. He is revealing more of who he is to us, which means our revelation will continuously change regarding him. Now, understand this doesn't mean that what we believed previously was wrong. It just means that now he has shown us more. So what we have known previously has to have an additional added uh, revelation to it. Right? But these are the conditions. Since, okay, so listen. We know that if we fulfill those conditions, the same offer is open to us. Uh, and those conditions, we can see a, a distinct progression. Walk in His ways. Now, this is not very difficult. I mean, since you were started giving your life to Yeshua, His desire and passion for you is to understand your righteousness. You know, understand the gift that he's given you. Understand that you are right with God. Know that you are holy and set apart. I mean, he doesn't look at you like he looked at the, at the people in the Old Testament. You know, he says, because of your sin, I've turned my face. Now, in the New Testament, he doesn't say that. He says, because of Yeshua, I can't stop looking at you. You're pure, holy, set apart, spotless, blameless. We have to look at it like that. You might look at it through your own eyes and say, but Lord, I'm a mess. But Lord, I'm full of sin. And Lord, I've done this and I do this. And how can you love me? And I've been such a miserable, terrible person. And I did such terrible things. And I, I have allowed such a terrible things in my life. And, and I'm such a mess. But he does not look at you like that. You know, we have to remind ourselves of this consistently. Because unfortunately, and I say this and I, I mean this as, as dear as I can. But the church doesn't teach us that. So church teaches us that we are rotten to the core. Now, I'm not saying we're not, but I can't believe that anymore. No matter what I do, no matter what's going on in my life, I have to get to a point where I believe Him above everybody else, especially myself. I have to believe Him above what I believe myself to think of who I am. Because who I think I am is not what He thinks I am. Walk in his ways, perform his services, govern his house, have charge of his courts. Then he will be able to stand in his presence in a different realm. Now you have to understand, I'm not talking about me shifting from the kingdom of earth into the kingdom of heaven and have access to that realm. I'm talking about a deep, intense, intimate place where Yahweh allows only a very few sons and few daughters in. Because for me to begin to understand um, his ways, to perform his services, to govern his house, to have uh, charge of his courts, I have to enter in beyond the veil. That's right. That's right. 
there's none of this on this side of the veil. So we have to understand the scripture and have to understand that, that Joshua is not in a natural dimension. He's shifted into the kingdom of heaven and Yahweh is showing him things that he needs to begin to understand and have revelation of. That's why I'm constantly going back to remind you, divide your soul and spirit. It might have to happen more than once. It might have to happen once a day for the next year. You might have to do it all the time because your soul is consistently going to want to come back. I remind you all the time, walk with the seven spirits. Walk with them as often as you can and bind them to you. Engage the 24 living letters, especially the Shin Kado and the Ga. Engage these living beings. As a matter of fact, if you listen to one of Eon's teachings, he just released it. It's a two-hour session where everybody in this room is praying in tongues. And while we're praying in tongues, they take each letter and binds it to your DNA. So you take the Aleph and you go, Robo Shaza Kandri Mea Sayer and Babra Gotra Mustal Babri Mirma. But you don't look at the Aleph per se, you look at the, 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 the head of the ox. And you take that head of the ox and you begin to weave it into your DNA. And it's just that process of reminding yourself, well, this is a dimension of the Word of God that I need because it changes who I am. It sets in my bones a whole another dimension of belief. It teaches me things that I cannot know in the natural. It teaches me beyond that which is written, um, that which is known, this which is already under the sun and the moon. It takes me into a realm and a dimension where I get to learn and receive revelation that comes out of the heart of Yahweh. It's designed to blow us away. How are you guys doing? His desire for us is to go in a, to a place in Him that is deeper and higher than what we've ever experienced before. Moses, as we understand it, he knew the ways of Yahweh. I mean, let's think about it. He went in body, soul, and spirit for 40 days. Now, I get very upset when I listen to people that's gone in physically. There's not many that I know of. But when I read about Moses and how he went in and the 40 days he spent, then came back out, got all angry, threw down the, the tablets, went back in for another 40 days. I'm thinking he did that on purpose. Because I would also throw the tablets down if I know I can go back in again for another 40 days. Now let's think about it. And he comes back with more. It's not, it's not like, I was like, hey, I ran out of stone. I can't write another one. I can't do it. Sorry. What were you thinking? There was only one, uh, there's only one piece of stone like that in heaven. You know, it, it's not quite like that. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just thinking, you know. I mean, if you spend 40 days physically with Yahweh, you wouldn't want to live there. But Moses had an idea of the ways of God. There was a reason for that. He was prepared to risk engaging with God. Now, you have to understand the mentality. Uh, you can't see God face to face. You know, now he's standing in a position where he is literally, his whole being is surrounded by the Almighty God. But he becomes friends with him. Matter of fact, best friends. Matter of fact, he's standing on the mountain and he's telling God to repent. Mm -hmm. You have to be pretty close to God to tell him to repent. Mm -hmm. There's a covenant, there's a relationship. Moses knows the ways. And I love that. I love that he knows the way of God. How are you guys doing? Right. There was a reason for this. This is Moses knowing God. He was prepared to risk engaging with Yahweh, to meet him face to face. When the rest of Israel kept their distance from the fire and the smoke on the mountain. I don't know where you're at, but I've been taught for many years of my life I can't see him. And the first time I went in and saw him, all of that which I learned or what I was taught, previously was eliminated out of my mind, out of my system, out of my understanding, yeah. because I felt that I was lied to. Mm -hmm. Because now I sit before my father and I look at him and I'm thinking, why am I not lion, ox, eagle, lining? <laughs> Oxing, lining, eagling, manning. Why am I not, why is it not reflecting? I behold him. If I behold him, that's what I'm going to be become. We have to begin to see what Yahweh wants us to change our belief system to. Because now that I know I can see Him and engage Him, what stops me from doing it every day for hours at a time? While I'm working every single day, I have a full-time job, I can't just do this. Well, make time. Because you can engage Him without engaging Him, if that makes any sense. But it's a practice. 
It's not just going to happen overnight. And I can guarantee you, Yahweh is calling a company of people that will sacrifice time to spend with Him. You guys okay? Yes. It's not an easy thing to get to know Yahweh's ways. But He invites us to come, as Moses did, into the heavenly realms, into His presence, into His glory. We have to remind yourself what we were taught in church. It's all about salvation. It's all about getting people saved. It's all about preaching the gospel. And, and it's almost like I make it sound that that's not what it's all about. Sure, it is. Yahweh's heartbeat is for the people to come in and to get saved. But we have to understand another dimension of what Yahweh wants to release to us here. Because when I go in and I begin to spend time with Him, when I go in and I begin to understand who I am, when I'm ignited in the full glorification and I come out of my Father's faces and I step into creation, I bring alignment to all things then Satan does not have the power that he carries right now. He doesn't have the hold, doesn't have the hold on, on the earth as he has now, right now. He can't bring in the darkness as he has bring, up to this, bring it in up to this point. Because the sun, the sons of light has come into the atmosphere and darkness cannot prevail. Right. We understand the only darkness that we will have on the face of the earth is the mysteries that Yahweh wants to release and reveal to the sons. Yeah. Satan's under our feet and that means that he has no place of residence but under me, which means I am his authority, I am the power that he has to submit to. You might say, well, no, 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 that's, that's, that's God only. Well, God gave me dominion over the earth. Right. And we have to try to take up our place, take up this position that's ours, and start running with the governance of what creation is needed, or what creation needs. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Yes. Remember how Moses uh, asked Yahweh to show him his glory? How Yahweh passed by before him and he was not able to see Yahweh's face. But only what the King James Bible calls his back parts. Now, when we read that in our Greek understanding mindset, it makes us think that we can't see him face to face because that's what it says. But if you study and meditate the scripture, it actually means you will never see me before time was time. Because he was talking to him face to face. Then he went in and spent 40 days with him. You want to tell me that for 40 days he only spoke to God's back? <laughs> we have to understand what it means. He's saying there's so much to me that you can never know all of me. But the more time you spent with me, the more I will reveal to you, the more you engage me, the more I open up to you, the closer you get to me, the more you'll see, the more you'll want, and the more you'll understand. The further away I am from him, the less I know him. And this works like this with anybody. The closer you get to someone, the easier it is for you to have revelation of that person's life. Right. You know, if I look at my friends and my people in my life, there's people that has a revelation of who I am because they see all of me. And then there's people that only see this. There's people that come to the meetings and we know each other at a level. It's people that come to the meetings and I have spent time with outside of the meetings. It's people that come to the meeting only and never talk to me. There's people that come only to my Facebook page and never inbox me. There's people that watch my videos on YouTube and never has never known me or said a word to me that I will never know or understand. They do not know me. Do you understand that? Because you know my name or because you say I know good stuff doesn't mean you actually know me. Right. For me, for you to know me, you have to spend time with me. And it's the same with Yeshua and, and Yahweh in the fullness of the glory of who He is. I cannot just read the Bible and say, well, I know Him because I can quote Scripture. Uh, Satan can quote Scripture. The Bible actually goes as far as to say, James, the believing is not enough. Even the demons believe and they tremble. Right? We have to get to understand how desperately He desires a company of people that is willing to go to a deep place of intimacy with Him, to know His ways, to understand who we are, to govern His courts, and to set ourselves in motion with all that He has for us, and to walk in the fullness of that power that comes with the, 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 the um, responsibility of that intimacy and relationship. It brings a covenant. Mm -hmm. well, it's exciting. So whatever would God's back look like? I mean, how, how deep can you go? It's not his behind. Right? So if you understand what Yahweh was saying, is that there's just too much. 
for you to see all of me. We understand that this is how Moses was able to write the first five books of the Bible, including the story of creation and all the other events which happened before his lifetime. I mean, he saw his own death. He saw his own mistake and still made it. <laughs> and I, I want to tell you, this is the level of intimacy Yahweh desires for us. To go into a place, into a realm, into a, a dimension where we spend so much time with him that he can begin to reveal this level of revelation to us. I mean, how did Moses begin to write the uh, creation, the beginning of creation without being there? How did he know the genealogy from Genesis right through to where he stopped with his pen? How did he know all these names? How was it possible for him to write all this stuff down? Because he walked with Yahweh at a level that was deeper than what we can fathom or understand. So it's almost like Yahweh is calling us into this place to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into Him. But the rest of the nation of Israel did not go up that mountain. <coughs> and all they saw was that which God did. They saw His works, they saw His miracles, but they didn't really begin to understand who He is, what He is like. Now, this is exactly what's happening in the church. <laughs> People know what he can do. We've seen some great works. We've seen some great miracles, signs and wonders. But the people don't know him. Because it's all about, well, let's do some signs and wonders. Then we can get a thousand people in a church because someone's going to get healed. And that's all we want. How about we get uh, groups of, 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 of churches coming together for intimacy, for uh, worship. Okay, well, you know what will happen? You'll have five people. Because nobody wants to get intimate with Jesus. They want to see a sign and a wonder and a miracle. Right. Then I might believe in Him. <laughs> now, I mean, it's, it's the reason there's gifts, but the gifts is for unbelievers. Right. So when the ecclesia meets, it's not with signs and wonders. It's for education. It's for training and ministry purposes. And so that you can be educated, so that you can go do ministry. <laughs> we understand that's the function of the far fault. If I'm called to be an evangelist, I'm not called to evangelize. That's every single Christian's function. I'm called to teach those in the ecclesia how to become evangelists. How to evangelize. How to operate in the signs and the wonders. In the gifts. How to work this out. If I'm a teacher, I'm supposed to be teaching those that needs to be taught on how to teach, how to receive revelation, how to walk in what Yahweh has. Same with the pastoral care. It's my function, it's my responsibility to pastor those younger and smaller than me. To bring a dimensional message in me out to those that I can care for and bring life to. You guys okay? Yes. And I always say this, you have to have someone in your life that is a mentor or a spiritual father. You have to have someone in your life that is a brother or a sister or someone that you can communicate with that's the same level as you. And you have to have someone that you believe teaching. Those are three extremely, extremely important things you have to have in your life. Unless you don't want to grow. You all okay? Yes. God is inviting us to do as Moses did. So that we can know his ways. And when we know his ways, we can do the works that he does. You know, I always, I always want to see this. I walk into the Father's house and I want to see how he operates in his kingdom. Yeah. You know, outside of the idea of just being around my Father, just being around Yeshua, just spending time with, with the fullness of Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, and in being in that presence, being in that midst, I love to see how my Father runs things. Mm -hmm. I love to see how he doesn't order everybody around. Hey, do this, hey, do that. It's an order that's set in place and everybody knows exactly what to do at any given time. No matter who comes in there that's new, there's a knowing and everybody that walks in the face of the heavens uh, has a knowing. I don't have to sit around the table, although I have, but you don't have to sit around the table where Yahweh says, come, let me sit, let's sit you down, let's talk. You can do that and I have done that and so can you, but it's not so much that as what it is, he's talking and I'm not particularly seeing his lips move because I just know exactly what he's saying. 
Because we understand the original language was Hebraic, not in the, the, the Aleph Tav is what it was, the pictorial form. Which basically means your thoughts is exposed. Everything was seen. So when you talk, it wasn't so much words, it was just pictures showing. And everybody ex understood exactly what it was. You guys, hello? Yes. <laughs> we know this stuff, right? God is inviting us to do as Moses did, so that we can know his ways. When, uh, and when we know his ways, we can do the works that he has done. Moses performed miracles. He brought water out of rock. He used his staff. He exercised power. Um, Israel just received. Now, I don't want to just receive. I want to be the one doing it. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm saying all these things in the natural. It looks like we don't do much. But in the supernatural, in the, the kingdom of heaven, there's so much changing. There's so much shifting. There's so much opening up. Yahweh is revealing so much and bringing so much into the atmosphere because sons are waking up. It's not so much about what people can see. It's not so much about how spiritual I am and how much I can impress you as what it is. My work in the spirit realm, my work in my father's house, my work in the kingdom of heaven, my work coming out of my father's four faces into creation and the thing that needs to be done that I've been doing. And so are you and so are you and so are you. It's our responsibility as ones um, doing your father's will and work, works in the earth to bring governance into place. Now, people don't see it, people don't understand it, but it doesn't mean that it's not getting done. A lot of the things happening in the natural right now is because sons and daughters have been operating in the spirit, doing things according to what Yahweh's blueprints for the earth has been. Now, it's unseen, it's unknown. Only a little bit talk about, yeah, only a little bit talk about it, yeah. Unfortunately, every time we preach, there's something that you want to release to those that you're teaching. And unfortunately, it's live on Facebook and it's on YouTube. Anyone can listen to it. So there's the uneducated and the immature or the manure that's listening to it. And they have all kinds of stupid comments to say about it because they don't understand it. Because again, a great one cannot understand algebra. It doesn't mean the one that understands algebra is wrong. We know this, right? And I'm not going to go into detail. I'm not fighting with anybody. <laughs> the whole nation saw the works, but uh, none of them ever actually did the works like Moses did. Yeshua said that he did what he saw his father doing. John 5, uh, John 5 19. And he expects us to do the works he did and greater ones. Now, I want to go as far as to say that if, if you understand what's happening in the spirit realm and operating in the courts and going into the court of war, going into the court of the angelic, operating in any other realm within the kingdom of heaven, coming out from the phases of Yahweh into creation to operate as a son and to do certain things, you are doing greater things than what Yeshua did on the earth. We're bringing alignment to creation that has never been brought before. We are answering creation's call that has never been answered before. I mean, I don't know, but it's exciting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We are to walk in His ways. We first have to know His ways, right? Yes, right? If you're not in Him, if you do not understand Him, if you're not living and moving and having your being in Him, if you're not in His kingdom on a daily basis, how do you know what He's doing? That's right. <clears throat> well, just study the Word, brother. Just read the Bible. Well, okay, it's great. It's a good, a good idea. I'm not saying don't do it. Do it. Absolutely. Study it. Meditate it. Go into it. Open it up. Break it into portions. Meditate on every portion you can possibly find. But also remind yourself that's just one dimension. Right. Like I have to take up everything Yahweh's opened up. I have to engage everything that's out there. If Yeshua studied the book of Enoch, why are you not studying the book of Enoch? Mm -hmm. No, it's not in the Bible, brother. Okay. <laughs> There's books that we need to study, meditate on, read. That's not in the Bible. There's dimensions of the word that's not written that we have to engage. There's portions of the living word that we have to go into and eat as much as we can off. There's the living letters that has revelation in each and every one of them. That's fiery gates. We have to engage that. There's Yeshua on the side of the veil after his torment that we can get, go into. As a matter of fact, I'm seated in him in heavenly places. I'm seated in a dimension of the word that has the capacity to feed me so much that I will not be able to contain it. To do the works of Yahweh, we need to know the ways of Yahweh. Then we can be among those who bring the kingdom from heaven to earth. Yes. This is so much the Father's desire for the kingdom of earth, heaven to come into the earth. Yes. And the only ones that can do it is me and you. 
No one else is going to do it. No angel can do it. Jesus himself cannot do it. You say, what are you talking about? Of course he can. No, he, he cannot. Because he's given us the authority. He's given us the responsibility. My responsibility. And we have to get to the point that I walk with Yahweh where we realize that if I don't do it, it's not going to get done. Not because Yahweh is lazy and doesn't want to do it. Because he's given me the authority, he's given me the power, and it's my responsibility to engage creation. You guys okay? Walk in the ways of Yahweh. The word of God will be a, a, a safeguard for us. Now remember, if you read Ephesians, it talks about the belt. Now, this what the, the written word is the belt. It's what holds everything together. I don't know how you're taught, but if you read the, the weapons or the, the warfare, the, the, you know, the Ephesians 6 from verse 12, I think, or somewhere in there, the idea behind it is that we understand there's two dimensions of the word that we have to engage there. The one is the belt that holds everything together. The other one is the sword. The sword is the illuminated word. The sword is that dimension that's come alive to us. It's that place within Yeshua that I live and move and have my being. The word of Yahweh will be an anchor for all we do. Yeshua is the word of Yahweh, the living word. That's why we have to engage him. That's what I love about the idea that I can go into him, the fact that I don't have to just sit where I used to, but now I'm seated in the spirit being inside of the fullness of who he is and out of that place where I'm seated in him, I'm governing with him, I'm seated on a throne and in the, on this throne I'm being taught how to come into the earth out of his four faces and I say this again, I come out of the four legislate as one who can speak as an oracle, as a priest, as a king, I stand in a position where creation looks at me and goes, yes, at last, a son. <laughs> we understand the word son is not just a child of uh, some, some person, it's um, the mature ones. Mm -hmm. It's the way he wants to express it. It's not just a normal child of God, not just a normal Christian. It's someone that stands in a mature position that has grown in the covenant that Yahweh has with him in relationship and intimacy. He is the exact image and likeness of the Father. This is Yeshua, right? And of course, I'm seated in Him. He didn't die for me, He died as me. Which means He's my example, He's what I need to step into, He's what I'm supposed to become. You guys believe that, right? If we have seen Him, we have seen the Father. If we get to know Yeshua in relationship, we can get to know the ways of Yahweh. We have to understand <coughs> everything we know about Yeshua is what Yahweh wants us to be. Everything we've understood about who Yeshua is in creation, in the heavens, is what Yahweh wants us to become. It's the growth that needs to step into place for us. <coughs> the ways of Yahweh revealed His character. So it is really important for us to become familiar with these ways. This is your responsibility. Go read the Psalm 119, the first 40 verses. It speaks of His word, His ways, His testimony, His judgment, His laws, His precepts, His, his attitudes, His ordinances, His commandments, and His wonders. That is His ways. That's who He is. But you know, when you step into His kingdom, you see His character. You see who He is. That's what I love because when I step into the kingdom of heaven, uh, the way that I have seen my Father in previous views changed. What I have been taught that I did not quite understand is this, or even the things that I've read in the Bible that didn't make sense to me. When I get to know Him, when I get to see His heartbeat for me, then I realize I've misunderstood what the Bible said because that's not his character. That's when you go study a little bit deeper. You go look to a little bit deeper places. You don't just look at it through the Greek mind. You want to go into the Hebrew understanding of it. Because sometimes what was written and what was intended to be written is two different things. Mm 
Right, because we've got translation after translation, and of course, uh, many of us have made some of the translations God. <laughs> if we will meditate on those facts, facets of his, uh, his revelation, we um, r realize they are all different, and that they each express some different um, aspect of His character. And of course, He's an infinite God. He is phenomenal, he is beautiful, he's incredible, but his ways is different than my ways. Meditate on the word. Now this takes you into different places. Because it's not just the Bible, but it's a good place to start. It's a good place to start with the Bible. Meditate on scripture is really key for unlocking this. We're beholding as in a mirror the glory of Yahweh are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Behold Him. Step into Him. You know, I say this and it's not because I need you to do it because I'm speaking to myself. I want to be in a position on a daily basis where I'm consistently, continuously looking into Him, putting my focus, my attention on all that He has for me, pouring into all of what He is. Consistently being engaging every attribute and every aspect of all of what I see in Him. Now, of course, you say, well, who's got time for that? Ain't nobody got time for that. Right? But that's not what I mean. It's, it's, I understand that I don't have time for that. But in the same breath, I'm a spirit being. While I'm a spirit being and I have the ability and the capacity to go into the kingdom of heaven and to engage whatever is there, my soul and my body can function completely normal in the creation. You say, well, how's that even possible? Well, before you were born from above, your spirit gave life to your soul and your body. Which means you were a two-strand being that didn't have an active spirit. Which means anybody out there right now that's millionaires and billionaires and businessmen and football players and basketball players that doesn't know Jesus, they have two parts strand functioning. Yeah. One is inactive. Which means they're not using their spirit for what its function is. They only have soul and body functioning creation. But I have my spirit, my soul and my body functioning fully because I'm an activated spirit man. So my spirit has the capacity to go into the kingdom of heaven and to look and see and perceive. And to pour that into my soul and my body. But in the same breath, I can engage all of this stuff without taking any of my focus off of my day or off of my workplace or off of my business or off of my family or whatever I'm supposed to be doing and still engage fully. And that comes with practice, practice, practice and practice. Yeah. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen the first time you try it. But as you continue to do it, as you begin to realize the importance of what Yahweh wants to release and reveal to you in your engagement like this, it will change everything for you. You will practice it on a daily basis. Because although your day is busy and you have other things to do, the idea and the passion that I know that all sons have is to be with the Father continuously. Yes. But when you have that cognitive understanding of what your spirit man is doing as a spirit man, then it changes your soul and your body's perception. Because my day may continue and be normal, but my spirit man is actively doing all kinds of things in the heavens. Bringing governance, releasing blueprints, just being trained, being equipped, going into the courts, operating in the courts, going into different nations, doing different things. As we meditate on the word versus passages, what is written becomes a doorway and experience and we become what we behold. Now I love this because I'm a spirit being now. Ooh. But I'm not just a normal human being anymore. The old man has died. That's not my dad and it's not a husband. Right? And we understand. It's the old man. Now you say, well, the old man represents your old life. No. It represents the human being that I no longer am. I'm no longer a human being. I'm now a spirit being. The primary me is rose up, taken authority over the rest of who I was, and is now set in the image and the likeness and the fullness of Yahweh. My soul and my body sits in my spirit. And my spirit teaches my soul, my body, everything it needs to know, consistently pouring into it. And so when I go into the Word, when I'm reading a scripture, I read it and I don't understand. I read it again and again. I kind of meditate on it. I kind of see what it can open up for me. But it becomes a gate for me. Because it becomes a gate. Because Yeshua and Yahweh in His fullness, when He created the, the, the words for the prophet to understand, and when they started writing it down, it was living. And it still is. 
That's why although I don't always agree with the interpretation or the translation, the idea behind it, it's still that it's living word. That it was spoken out of eons of revelation and insight. It was coming out of the heart of Yahweh for His people to understand and have revelation of certain things. It's a gateway. And as a spirit being, I can go into that gate. It is life. It is living. I can go in and go into a dimension that's not written, but can open up revelation to me. Right? And the more we behold, the more we become like what or whom we behold. We are transformed. That word trans, uh, metamorphosized. I love that. It's like a caterpillar changing into a butterfly. You know, even the DNA changes. It no longer looks in any way, fashion or form like a worm. <laughs> I don't know if you ever just looked at it. It's incredible. When a butterfly comes out, there's nothing of that thing that is the same as what it was. That's why the old man has died. That worm will never, ever, ever, ever be again. It's gone. It's finished. It's dead. It's not possible for it to be resurrected. It's now a butterfly. I can never, ever, 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 ever be a, a human being again. Ever. I'm now a spirit being. Now, I need to understand. The butterfly... Probably, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a butterfly. I've never, never seen it. <coughs> I have this feeling that he doesn't think he's a worm anymore. I have this feeling that he has no memory of being a worm. He knows how to fly. He knows exactly what he needs to do. Now, a worm doesn't go from flower to flower. He doesn't do that. A worm eats leaves, walks on a tree, finds something to do. If he doesn't get eaten by a bird. Right? If he's lucky. You know, the butterfly knows what it needs to do. <laughs> Goes from flower to flower. It's this whole new life that's instantly birthed. Now, I want to go as far as to say that this example sets me in an understanding that once I'm activated as a spirit being and I'm no longer a human being, everything that I need is in my understanding and knowledge. Everything that Yahweh has poured into me as a spirit being is already there. I just need to function in it. But what do we do? We want to carry the old ways, the old lives, the old understanding, the old views with us. But that's died. Not like the butterfly that doesn't even remember it or doesn't even know what's there. It's now, it's never been. In its understanding, it's never been a worm. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. And I might not, it might not even be 100% true. I don't know what butterflies think. But I, but I think if a butterfly could think, he wasn't going to think that it was a worm. <laughs> Well, that's instinct, right? I was a worm. Now I'm a butterfly, but I can't remember that I was a worm because in the process of becoming a worm, I changed into a butterfly. So wormy is not there anymore. Oh, we're not, we're not like that. Well, we're supposed to be. I think, <laughs> I think, I think when Yahweh is uh, igniting us as spirit beings, it's like, well, now that you're a spirit being, you should not be able to remember any of your human side. That's what it means uh, to transform, right? That's the transformation. A change in its DNA takes place. Meditation like this can transform us that deeply. That's why what I become, I become what I behold is so key. As I think in my heart, I will be. It's this process Yahweh wants us to understand. Well, I had two strands of DNA. Now I have three. I'm not even the same species anymore. I'm no longer a human being. Human beings has two, two, two strands of DNA and an inactive spirit. A change of DNA takes place. Meditation like this can transform us that deeply. Similarly, as we uh, receive the DNA of Yahweh in breaking bread, the light comes into our DNA as we are changed. We need to hear the rhema word, the, the word that Yahweh speaks right now, straight out of his heart. Yes. And let me be honest, I can't read that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible can be a gateway for me to go into to hear that. That's right. Because the idea the Father has here is that a son gets to go deeper than a child of God. Right. I mean, I can have really, really, really deep conversations with my 16-year-old. 
But I cannot have a very deep conversation with my, with my eight-year-old. I try to. It doesn't work. It's very basic. It's very simple. What did you do today? Oh, I played. I did this and we did that. We played a game and this is how the game worked. Sounds great. But, and then if I try and teach him the stuff that I'm teaching you or try to talk about life, it, it's not so interesting for him. But my 16-year-old, he can keep up. If I'm teaching him this stuff, he's excited about it. He talks some deep stuff to me as well, some things he believes, places that he's at. Because as you reach a mature level, you can receive a deeper insight regarding certain situations. Yahweh is calling a company of people to ignite, to go deeper than ever before, to, to allow him to pour into us more than what we've received previously. And what I love about this is that I don't have to have man pour into me. Now I say this and I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, let's not take that too literal because we need to share breaths. Correct, correct. We need to share breath. The coming together of the saints is probably one of the most important things. We have to come together. We have to meet. We have to be educated, not just by one person, but by each other. That's why I always say, well, I can't be your only mentor. Right. You know, I can be a spiritual father, but you need to have mentors in your life. I have one spiritual father that I love and honor, uh, Apostle Ashley McLuhan. He's my spiritual father. Right now, he's not teaching me, but he's still my spiritual father. He's, he's not the authority that I submit to, but I submit to him. He can call me at any given time and say, son, I do not like what you're teaching. This is what's wrong. This is what's wrong. Can you change it? Maybe I say no. Maybe I say yes. But this is the authority he has in my life. My mentors don't have that authority, but what they can do is they can teach me. Now, if they do come against me and say, I don't like what you're teaching, this is not right, I will submit. You guys okay? You getting get what I'm saying? It's Yahweh is looking for a company of people that will grow to that level. We, uh, and we can also have face-to-face -face encounters with Yahweh. Where he speaks a word to us directly. Yes. Go up into the mountain and I will teach you myself, he says. Mm -hmm. Now I need to be gathering, to gathering together and have someone as an oracle speaking to my life. But I can do that myself too. Yeah. Now I'm not saying we don't need prophets anymore, but you don't need a prophet. Mm -hmm. The king don't need a prophet. Why? Because that's an Old Testament understanding. The prophet is only to come and edify and, and equip the body of Christ. <laughs> and I cannot just sit around waiting for a prophetic word. Especially because my dad can speak to me myself. Why would my father, the one that I'm intimate with, that I love and honor and respect, talk to someone else to come talk to me, to tell me what he wants to say to me? Yeah. But that's a weird relationship. That actually, that's a kindergarten relationship because I remember doing just that. I had a girlfriend, but I didn't want to talk to her. Yeah. So I would tell my friend, hey, go tell this girl, that this is this and this and this and he'll go, uh, okay. And he'll go and he'll tell her that. Now am I saying there's no place for prophets? Don't misunderstand me. Because as a prophet, you walk up to someone in the street that doesn't know Jesus and you start telling them about their lives, the next thing they're going to do is accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. But we have begun to think that all of this is just for the church. Now I have to grow in a relationship with my God, myself. So that when my God wants to talk to me, he can talk directly to me. Right. <laughs> we don't seem to understand that. We just want somebody to tell us something. Now, I mean, yeah, there's a place for that because everyone's not at the same level. And it's good if you're a baby, if you're still a young believer in, your, in the faith, then you're going to need someone to come prophesy over you. Why? Because it gives direction. You know, it puts you in a position, it puts you in a place. That's why I say, well, we need the evangelist because the evangelist brings you into the kingdom. We need the pastor because it's maternal. Maternal, it's the mother. It mothers you, brings you to the very, very basics of your faith. Then you will meet the teacher. The teacher teaches you a little bit deeper things than what the pastor can. And then you meet the prophet. The prophet tells you exactly where you need to go, exactly what you're doing, exactly what's about to happen. He gives you your scroll. But then you have the apostle, that's the one that sends you. He says, okay, go. Once you're sent, you need to step in beyond the veil to become a son. To become a, 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 a priest. 
to become an oracle, become a legislator, to become a king. There has to be growth. It's what Yahweh desires for his people. When I, when I look at this, it's almost all he wants. He just wants us to grow, 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 grow. Are you guys okay? So uh, we can see him face to face and have face to face encounters with Yahweh where, we spe where he speaks to us directly. When, when that happens, we will know it is Yahweh because that revelation will line up with the truth of his nature that we already know. Now I want to remind you, there comes a day where you don't need to believe. Well, do I, I need to believe that this is what Yahweh said to me. I need to believe that this is true. Now I'm sitting before him face to face and he's telling me exactly what I want to hear. And once he said it, I know it. I don't have to try and believe for it. Right. It's a level that he shifts us into. He wants us to go higher, deeper, wider. Well, we learn to recognize his voice, but it's, it's not like that. I don't, need, I don't learn to recognize his voice. I sit before him. Can I say that? Yes. It all, it's all about his love. He loves us. He is love. You guys okay? Yes, sir. Let's go back to um, the first 40 verses of Psalm 19. Those are words such as walk, observe, seek, look, treasure, tell, rejoice, meditate, establish, delight, lives, live, uh, live, uh, sorry, lives, uh, live long or live for long, cling, run. Incline, revert, uh, reference, uh, and give thanks. Again, these are yet another, uh, another words of this verse which kind of gets us to understand and respond to the walking and seeking Yahweh's ways and to sit and to stand in his midst and his understanding and the understanding that he wants to bring us in who we are and who he is. You guys okay? He will bless, that is, he will empower us to prosper, to succeed to the highest level. Ordain, teach, open eyes, rebuke, take away reproach, revive, answer, strengthen, grant, enlarge our hearts, give understanding, and deal bountifully. This is the promise to those who walk with him. This is the promise to those who go deep into his presence and sit with him, to engage all of who he is. Those are some of the, the pathways and the protocols that pr pr uh, pr pr processes that, that will need to that we will need to follow if we want to fully experience and demonstrate the life of Yahweh. Of course, He wants to get us to understand. He wants us to have revelation. His desire for each of us is to walk at a level deeper every day. It's almost like, and I'm going to close with this, it's almost like he's calling us to understand, and I said this on Sunday, it's his desire for us to walk and be established in the kingdom of heaven, to grow to a level that when I come out of the four phases into creation, I expand who I am as a spirit being to such an extent that everything I've learned, everything that I've gained, everything that's mine, everything that I carry as a son is brought into creation, and everything that comes in with me uh, literally reshapes, reforms, and brings complete and utter restoration to creation because I am more than what they said I am. I am a son of the most high God and I have the power and the authority that he's given me to govern creation. It's like he's wanting to raise up a son, raise up a daughter that will know who they are and stand in creation with full force to do the things that we need to do. You all good? Yes, sir. Okay, Father, we want to love on you, praise you, worship you, glorify, magnify your name. I thank you, Father, that we have access to these realms, Father. We thank you that we get to sit with you and walk with you face to face. We thank you, Father, that your desire for us is to know your ways, to understand all of who you are, to, to, be, charged of your, uh, to be charged of your courts, to, to govern your house, 
Father, we have to understand that your desire for us is to grow and mature. We need to perform your services. Your, you belong for a company of people that will stand in these realms, fully mature, fully ready to govern, to come out fully, fully, fully clothed in you, to breathe your breath into creation and to align all things to the blueprints and the image that you've set it out to be. And if we are the only ones that can do it, Father, I ask, that you will set us on a path to grow, 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 to go deeper, 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 to go higher, higher, and higher in all of who you are, Father. We love you. We praise you. We thank you, my King. In the name of Yeshua.